What is going on everybody, Jay here from Maji and Jay. Today I'm coming with the unboxing and the review of another projector that I purchased from Banggood.com and let me tell you that this is one of the coolest ones that I've seen in my entire YouTube career. It is called the Doogie Smart QP1. It has a price point of only $169 US dollars and it comes with built-in Android, which is the 4.4.2 KitKat. It has about one gigabyte of RAM, eight gigabytes of ROM. It comes with the Amlogic S805 processors, quad core, and much more. So before we jump into the full specifications, let me go ahead and show you around the box as always. You can see on the front here we have the Doogie logo together with the model. It says Life Starts from Smart Cube and on the top here we can see that this was in collaboration with Texas Instruments. So getting a look on the side of the box, we got nothing there. On the right hand side we got nothing there. And then on the back side here we have some information about the product where it's made. And that's pretty much it. Now, I know that you guys have seen the color that looks exactly like the box. In this particular case, I got the white color model just to make things a little bit different. So getting a look inside here, we're going to find a little sheet of paper that says Doogie and it has a message on it. Okay, this is very nice. Setting this aside, inside we're going to see the actual projector itself. And let me tell you guys that this thing is quite tiny. As you can see, it fits in the palm of my hands. And it has the exact same measurements all the way around, which I believe is about two inches and a half or so. I have to confirm that later on for you guys, but yes, this is quite small and we can see how nice and well built it looks, or at least I can feel it already in my hands. This thing is not light as you guys may think. So yes, I am quite impressed so far. Now inside of the box, we're going to see the fast charger. I believe that this is a five volt, two amp charger, okay? And it comes included with it, of course. And there we can see that, yes, it is a five volt, two amp charger, and it works exactly as intended. Very neat. Then we also have here the manuals. These are in English, of course, and they are somewhat detailed. I mean, it's just explaining the basics on pretty much how to use Android. I know some of the information here is crucial, like the application so that you can use it with your smartphone. Now, in my uh, case, I got a controller that came included inside of the shipping box, which I don't have here. But this is the remote controller, okay? And it came with this little uh, Bluetooth dongle so that you can connect it into the projector and you can use it. Now, in my case, you guys see here that I have my keyboard all set up and that's because I'm going to be using my keyboard instead since I have already the uh, mouse pad and uh, pretty much I know how to use this keyboard quite well. I got used to it. So this is the one that we're going to be using on the review. But we're gonna be talking about that later on. Our next item here will be the USB cable. It is the standard USB. Now, honestly, guys, I have so many around that I just decided to use my own on the testing that I already completed. And then inside of the box, we have nothing else. As a matter of fact, we do have a warranty card here, which is usually here in the United States, as we know. But, uh, you know, usually Banggood is pretty good with warranty. So I would trust this a little bit, not too much, because again, it's coming from Doogie. But if you have problems, you can contact Banggood directly and they should be able to resolve the issues that you have with this projector. So far, I have seen none. And according to reviews, this thing is quite awesome. So now let me go ahead and set this aside and talk more about the projector. So coming back here to the Doogie Smart QP1, first of all, I would like to show you the measurements all the way around this product. And you can see that it is about two inches and a half. And it's going to have the same measurements on all sides as we can tell already. So this is very neat, it's very portable. On the front there, we find the lens. It has a uh, built-in LED light of 20,000 hours of life. It has only 70 lumens and a native resolution of 854 by 480. So it is not the most impressive out there. But according to the size, and once you are viewing this um, on the actual projection, depending on how far you are, you really can't feel the resolution. You might think that it is actually 720p or so. So that doesn't really affect the, um, you know, the user experience of the product. On the side, we also find here the little wheel for the focus. Now, something that we are missing is the keystone correction. So you must you know, be careful where you place this because it could look distorted and you can't fix it directly from here. Something that I find a little bit of a downer, but again, judging by the size, we really can't ask for much. We also got here the power key and then here we have a little flap where inside we're going to see the micro USB port and also supports OTG. Uh, we got here the LED light for charging purposes. Uh, when you're low on battery, it'll go red and when it's fully charged, it'll turn blue. On the back, it's absolutely plain. We don't have nothing but the design itself. And as we can tell guys talking about design, we have a lot of cooling here. The speakers, I believe one of them is located on the top or actually the fan is located on the top and the speaker is located here on the side. Now also on the side we find a um, regular USB port and this is where I connect the dongle for my keyboard which I have somewhere around here, here it is. So basically what you have to do is plug it in on the side or you can simply hook up the remote controller that came included by Doogie. 
Now this one is cool guys because it has all the Android buttons. You can see you have a power key so you don't have to be pressing it directly from the projector. It makes it a lot easier. We have a menu key. We also have here some arrows so that we can navigate throughout the system and of course the selector. We have a back key, a home key, a volume up and down which is also really important and also we have here a little mouse uh, button so for this you have to hold it and just move it around. I mean the sensor really doesn't work that well I would say in my opinion but it's still nice to have it. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I prefer to use my keyboard. With this being said about the remote controller, another cool feature about this projector is the built-in battery. It comes with 4800 milliamps and you can use it as a power bank. In my case, I was using my Samsung Galaxy S7 and it did charge it quite well. Now, something that I find a little bit of an inconvenience is that it only comes with one port so you have to disable your uh, USB dongle here. Uh, to operate the keyboard and also the projector must be turned on at all times in order to work as a power bank. Other than those two edges is uh, quite useful especially if you're under an emergency you never know the, you know you're watching a movie you're providing some Wi-Fi to the projector whatever the case may be and you're running low on battery you can use this option. Now I would recommend to use your car's lighter or something else if you could because again the battery is going to deplete quite fast. Now another test I'm going to do here is the weight of the device. I believe it's uh, 244 grams and there it is, it's quite heavy as you guys can tell according to the size so this thing is quite solid all the way around. So now let me go ahead and power it on and talk a little bit more about the operating system. And now here we have the boot animation, first of all we got the Doja logo, I believe it comes up twice. Now something that I've noticed already is the fan noise is quite loud and sometimes it can be a little bit of a distraction especially if you don't have a nice quality audio, I would say connect a Bluetooth speaker. In my case I had the Altec Lansing and it did quite well, it makes you ignore the fan noise. But let's say it's a suspense movie or maybe a drama movie where everything is a little bit quieter, uh, the fan may get on the way. When you first boot up the system you should be prompted with a message very similar to the one you see here asking you to install an application for remote purposes. In my case, um, on my device it says Doji Remote, that's the application, but I believe there's a secure code on the manuals that you can scan and download the application for iOS or also Android. After doing so, if you follow the instructions, it says there to please press the um, QR code scanner on the application itself and then you will scan the code that you see on the screen and that should have you connected in no time. It does work well sometimes, but like I said, uh, it's a little bit of an inconvenience having your internet you know, disconnected all the time. So I decided to just use my keyboard or the remote included with the system and you will be enjoying it a lot more. Alrighty guys, so here we are greeted with the operating system which is the Android 4.4.2 So let me go ahead and show you around the system and let's get started here by pressing on settings uh, The first options we're going to find on here are quite stock. We got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth which is the 4.2 And yes, I have already connected it with my uh, Alta Glancing and it did quite well I also want to apologize for this little focus issue I'm having. I try my best to uh, do a recording on the projector guys, but for some reason it keeps uh, unfocusing. I really don't know why. I tried the manual focus and it didn't work quite well. And there's also a little bit of uh, color distortion, but that's caused by the camera. So as you guys can tell, I am connected here to my Wi-Fi. Also supports the 5 gigahertz one. Now for some reason, uh, my Wi-Fi is acting up a little bit and it wasn't working well with this one. So I decided to connect with the regular one and everything is uh, going very smoothly. Uh, the next one we got here is sounds. And we got here some notifications and stuff that we can change to. There we go. Okay, nothing special. Very, very basic for Android. Uh, next one we got here is uh, display and all we can do pretty much here is just uh, change the fonts a little bit and also the wallpaper. Okay, again, nothing uh, super there. And uh, then we got storage. This one you guys might want to see out of the 8 gigabytes, we have about 5.32 gigabytes available, which is not a lot. I would recommend either installing a TF card. Um, remember guys that it does support OTG on both of the USB ports, like the regular one and also the micro one. So you can always connect an external uh, adapter and plug in a memory if you want to do so. The next one we got here is a battery. And this is the current usage that I have right now. It's saying that the tablet's on idle, but I guess that's confusing it with the actual projection lamp, which is the one sucking the most battery. And then after this, it's going to be the Wi-Fi. And now getting a closer look here at the operating system, it's actually pretty clean with the exception that I downloaded just a few applications on here like Netflix, YouTube, Kodi, and also a game just for demonstration purposes. Now this is not really a gaming projector as I said before because the processor is a little bit underpowered and also we don't have a lot of RAM. 
but something like this game or maybe um, Ospo 8, if you download just that game, you should be okay. You need to get a uh, gaming controller in order to have a better experience. Now, I did notice um, that a lot of YouTubers out there were having issues with the Play Store. In my case, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. As a matter of fact, it came working right out of the box, even though I already received an update. So to show you here, uh, let me go ahead and open the application itself. And this is not where the issue is. The application we're opening for the other YouTubers, but now every time they try downloading something, it wasn't letting them. It was giving them an error code. So here, as you guys can tell, when I try to, let's say, just download this random application and I hit accept, it uh, starts downloading it for me. So everything is working flawlessly. Now, like I said before, since I tried to connect to my um, to the application, uh, right now the internet seems a little bit buggy, but it is working just fine. So here we got some of the applications that come included with the system, and one of them is an application manager called App Installer. You have Chrome, Downloads, File Browser, Gallery, Google Settings, Happy Cast. Now this application uh, needs to be used uh, together with the DLNA um, little tab on your remote controller so that you can hook it up to AirPlay on the iMac and such. It's very similar to Mericast and now talking about Mericast it does work quite well. Now this is the one that I tested and this is the one that I really care about guys to be honest with you. I know that some other YouTubers tested it but I really am not a fan of it. So to install it uh, or to get connected you just go to your smartphone. In my case I'm using the Samsung Galaxy um, S7. So right now it's trying to pair and we should give it here a few seconds or so. And right now we are connected. So this is everything that I have here on my smartphone. And if we, uh, let's say, open an application such as YouTube and let's say we start playing a video and you put it on landscape mode, it should be switching for you. Now there is a little bit of a lag to be honest. Okay, so right now everything is working as intended, as you guys can tell. So um, again, I didn't have you know a lot of issues working with the Mericast, so that's definitely a plus for this device. So right now it's asking me if I want to exit from Mericast. Yes, I want to do that. Um, also, another positive aspect, like I said before, is the speakers on the device. They work quite well. Uh, to test them, I'm going to open that video once more here, but directly from YouTube. And now we can take this opportunity to test it as well. Uh, you're going to see that the speaker quality is not so bad. Unfortunately, due to copyright purposes, I cannot use other videos, so I have to only use my video. But here you can get a closer idea. What is going on, everybody? Jay here from Maji and Jay. Today I got the unboxing and the quick hands-on of the new Asus Zenfone 3 that I purchased from eBay for 309 US dollars. I know that this phone was announced to have a price point of about $199, but keep in mind that this seller in particular is including free fast shipping. I got it only in three days directly from Taiwan to the United States. And also they're getting charged some eBay fees and PayPal fees, so it is understandable that they will increase the price in order to make a little bit of profit. So getting a look here around the box, we can see that this is very simplistic. We don't have a lot going on. Now keep in mind that this is the basic model of the Asus Zenfone 3. As there are three different uh, models available. First of all, we have the base, then we got the deluxe, and also the max. And the difference is quite dramatic from each one. Well, guys, there we have it for the quality of the audio. Now, I have to admit that this is not going to be something that will blow your ears off. If you want to have a better uh, sound experience, I would just recommend getting your own Bluetooth speaker. As I said before, I connected my Altic Lansing, and it's going to do a lot better for you. The sound is going to be a lot more crispier and such. But now, considering how many components this thing has inside of the actual body, it's quite amazing to know that it sounds so great for being so tiny. Another great aspect about this little projector is that it is awesome for browsing. It works very fast. I didn't have an issue. I opened a few websites. I navigated throughout the system and it did very well. So on that behalf, you guys are not going to be disappointed. I would say the major disappointment here is going to be the application for the remote. Um, I know it's a cool little feature they implemented, but it doesn't work really as I expected it to be. And um, other than that, guys, I really don't have any complaints. Again, considering the size, considering how cheap it is, considering what it does, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. So aside from YouTube, um, another great app that works flawlessly on this system is Netflix, which is a very popular streamer here in the United States. And I'm currently using it for free thanks to the purchase I did with the Samsung Galaxy S7. 
So here I'm going to open it up so that you guys can see that it is working flawlessly and I am not encountering any issues whatsoever. And now that we have completed the testing on the Doogie Smart QP1, I have to say that if you guys are looking for a projector that it is extremely portable, extremely affordable, and at the same time useful, I would definitely recommend the Doogie Smart QP1. Keep in mind that this uh, little projector is very independent. It has its own built-in battery. It comes with the Android 4.4.2. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and everything in one little cube. So it makes it absolutely amazing. And not only that, but it's also serving as a power bank. So I think, guys, it is extremely cool and also affordable considering what it is and very useful and very functional. So with this being said, if you guys think this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment below if you have any questions about this product. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys on my next one.